The Farmers Branch police officer who shot and killed a teen while off duty is tonight behind bars charged with murder. Hello, everybody. I'm Heather Hayes. I'm Steve Eager. It's 9 o'clock. Officer Ken Johnson was arrested shortly before 6 o'clock tonight. He is charged with one count of murder and one count of aggravated assault. Addison police say Sunday night, Johnson, who was off duty at the time, spotted two teens breaking into a car at an apartment complex on Marsh Lane. The suspects took off. Johnson chased them. Surveillance video shows Johnson's car hitting the suspects. Police say after that, Johnson fired at them. Both teens were hit. 16-year-old Jose Cruz was pronounced dead at the scene. The other boy, Edgar Rodriguez, was shot in the head but is expected to be okay. The Cruz family spoke with about the arrest after a visitation for Jose in Northwest Dallas tonight. Oxford Gianna Zoga is there now with more. Stephen Heather, Jose Cruz's family learned about the arrest of Officer Ken Johnson during the visitation services here for Cruz at this funeral home this evening. And afterward, uh, Cruz's family, his grandmother, his mother, cousins, some friends uh, spoke uh, about uh, what they, they felt after learning about this arrest. They gathered outside. They said they were relieved to hear that Addison police did make an arrest and that off-duty Farmers Branch Officer Ken Johnson is facing a murder charge and an aggravated assault charge in this case. A family spokesperson, Carlos Quintanilla, says the arrest happening within days of the shooting spoke to the strength of the evidence in this case, pointing to questionable actions by the off-duty officer. Quintanilla translated for Cruz's mother, who spoke in Spanish about the arrest. Más tranquila. Very tranquil. Me siento más... And very strong. She's gotten a lot of strength from the fact that he's been arrested and charged. Because there's going to be justice for him. The family has been outspoken since the shooting on Sunday. There have been protests. They'd met with Farmers Branch and Addison Police Departments about these separate investigations. Addison, of course, looking at the criminal side. Chief Paul Spencer said in a statement that this remains an active investigation, expects several more weeks of additional investigative work. He stressed that the police department was not ready to release uh, much evidence or much of the evidence that they have gathered in this case. Farmers Branch also says that uh, Officer Johnson is still currently employed with that police department, but that he is under an internal investigations, internal affairs review right now, and that review is still ongoing. They are still looking into his actions on Sunday. Back to you. All right, so Deanna, any word from Johnson or, or maybe from his attorney regarding these recent developments? No word from Johnson, but uh, earlier this evening, I, I did speak briefly with his uh, attorney over the phone. Uh, he said that he was not yet aware of, of an impending arrest. Of, of course, it did turn out that Officer Johnson was arrested at 5.55 p.m. today in Addison. Uh, the attorney uh, has not gotten back with us uh, about uh, any sort of statement coming from his client, at least not yet this evening. He has previously said that uh, uh, Mr. Johnson uh, feared for his life when the shooting happened and that he was also cooperating in this investigation. Heather, back All to right. you. Deanna Zoga, live, thank you. Criminal defense attorney and former police officer now works as a sheriff's officer reserve, Pete Schulte, here now. All right, Ken Johnson was arrested just before six o'clock. As we, we said, you predicted Monday night that it would, it, it may be Thursday and people got mad at you. It happens Wednesday. Right. Uh, a lot of people were kind of saying, you're speculating, you're out of line, you, you were right on, so your sources were accurate. Um, so let me ask you, why, why the charges? Well, I'll tell you that Texas law, when we're talking about defending property, is very limited on when deadly force is appropriate. And it all kind of starts off in the very beginning. When did the incident take place? And there's a, there's a bunch of things that have to come into play. But the first thing is, is Texas law only allows deadly force to be used when theft or burglary or criminal mischief occurs in the nighttime. And this wasn't in the nighttime. It was during the day, 7.08 p.m. in the evening, still daylight, doesn't qualify. So. The charges are appropriate in this case. I'm not saying what the jury might do, right. but to start the process, I hate to say it, as a police officer, as a defense attorney, it's a, poli it's a, it's a police officer, but they're appropriate. Is, is there an accrual here, uh, according to witnesses? I mean, there was a chase, there was a cr ramming from behind, and then there was a shooting. Does that kind of this, based on that, adding on to that, does that matter, or is it just the final result? At the end of the at final the result is, was deadly force authorized? And the answer across the board is no. And that is what prompted these charges. And, 
you know, you look at these situations and, you know, him being a police officer probably hurt him in this case because the police detectives who were looking at this were probably thinking if this was me investigating this crime going, he should have known better. He should know the penal code better than any regular citizen. So these investigators had to pull that away, that label of him being a police officer and look at it. What would a regular citizen mm -hmm. be charged with in this case? And that's what they went with. Let's talk about race, uh, social media, I I the reactions are full of it. Uh, white people saying if the cop were white, they would be rioting in the street. Black people saying if the cop were white, he wouldn't be indicted and arrested right now, uh, and that the process would, would take a year. Uh, anything unusual to you here of how this was happened, the speed at which it moved, race involved? No, absolutely not. I think Addison Police did a fantastic job of how they handled this. I think they, you know, they got out as much information as they could. I mean, this is clearly based on the facts. And what I've been hearing from my law enforcement sources, from the people that I know, is this is pretty cut and dry. And when the facts get known, I haven't seen the evidence, but I've heard when the facts get released and the facts are known, they're going to explain explicitly how we got here tonight and why it wasn't a grand jury referral. This had been a regular citizen who'd gotten in this situation. They don't get the benefit of going to the grand jury. Officer Johnson's still going to get the benefit of a grand jury review. But it's going to be get past that because there's no defense in Texas law like we've already talked about. He's going to have to go to a jury. And a jury is going to be able to consider if he's convicted what happened in this case, that they were breaking into his vehicle. We learned that yesterday mm -hmm. at the press conference. But again, as an off-duty officer, I've been in off-duty situations, not getting involved, but I become a good witness. You don't take action. And my understanding is yesterday from the press conference was there's no 911 call either. That should be the first thing that officer should have done was call 911. Let's talk about um, the, the circumstances, I guess, and, and how it escalates, how, how the video that you've heard about exists. Does that play into the speed of which this was handled? You, you have heard from your sources there's a video that captures everything. Yes, that captures from start to finish from, and this isn't a police video, this is, but again, we've talked about this numerous times, how many people have videos on their cell phones, right. I and mean, they've got videos, from what I'm hearing, is from all over the place, haven't seen them, but when they show this and they show a police officer driving his personal vehicle, ramming in the back of a car and then rushing up in the scene and opening fire. Again, it hasn't been reported yet, but I would be very shocked if there was a weapon in that car because they would have brought that out. That's what I was going to yeah. ask you. No, no gun based no on the No gun, because that probably. would have changed it from yeah. defensive property to defense of a person. And if there was a gun, he would not be facing charges right now. And let's clarify for our viewers, we've been kind of showing a video, but it's not that video of the car. That's correct. That video has not been released. Video. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about the officer as we wind this up. Jail, uh, general population tonight? I have a feeling he's going to get bond. He's, his bond's going to get set pretty quickly. He's going to be held away from general pop, general pop, as we call it in the uh -huh. jail, because of his position as a police officer. He is innocent of these charges until proven guilty. He's going to get his bond set. He's going to have an opportunity to present to a grand jury if he's indicted, which I expect that to happen. Mm -hmm. He's going to have to go to a jury of twelve and figure out what's going to happen. Uh, has bond been set? That'll be set sometime. What do you what do you think that'll be? I mean, a lot of these cases, if it were a citizen, it would right. be a million dollars or two million dollars. Judges sort of set things out there. What do you anticipate? He's got two charges. He's got a first degree murder and a second degree aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. I, I expect it to be somewhere around a quarter million. Okay. All right. Pete Schulte, you were right on a lot of this already, so thanks. For I hate that I was, appreciate but right. I appreciate it. Thanks.